in a world where production numbers reign supreme. One man on a mission. Verbal garbage. What's up, everybody? Another episode of Verbal Garbage coming at you hot and live. We got another special guest episode, and uh, this one's a real pleasure and a real honor for me to have. This gentleman's been helping me out with some of my editing work. And uh, Vince, if you don't mind, tell the people a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and what, what you're into, buddy. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so I'm from uh, Atlantic City, New Jersey. Uh, I live in Brazil now. I've been living here for about nine years. And uh, man, I uh, recently published a book about uh, my experiences with astral projection and lucid dreaming. And I've been practicing those for about 22 years now. Jeez. And uh, yeah, l- lately I've just been, you know, promoting the book, working on a new book and, you know, um, doing some other some other work that I got going on. That's awesome, man. So tons of directions I can go with that. Uh, first, let's just start off. How did you get into the, the lucid dreaming, the astral projection? What, what kind of started you with that? Uh, man, when I was 14 years old, I came across uh, the concept of out-of-body experiences on the internet. I found this website that talked about it, and I thought it was so cool, and uh, I found a method to do it, and within a week, I was able to leave my body, and I've been practicing that ever since. So, so yeah, man, this, like, when we, when we were going back and forth, I, I had so many questions, but it was so hard for me to, and if you don't mind, like, I'm completely ignorant in this realm, so it's kind of, like, the most layman terms, like, when you say out-of-body experience, is that, like, while you're laying in your bed, tucked in, sleeping overnight, or can you achieve that just by going into a room and closing your eyes? Like, how does that work? And give us a little specifics. Yeah, sure. Um, well, there are different types of out-of-body experiences. Um, so you have astral projection, um, you have uh, mental projection, remote viewing. You could consider lucid dreaming a type of out-of-body experience. If, oh, wow. if you consider an out-of-body experience uh, to be an experience in which your consciousness um, is operating like beyond the confines of your physical body. Uh, So out-of-body experience, I would say, is like a blanket term. It's like the most general term. And then there are specific types of these experiences. So uh, like astral projection. Yeah, if you um, don't mind breaking a beach down, dude, that'd be awesome. Sure. Astral projection is a type of -of out-of-body experience in which your consciousness leaves the physical body and it travels into higher dimensions of reality. And so reality consists of an entire spectrum of different dimensions that exist at different frequencies of energy. And it's similar to um, how there are different frequencies of light and we can only perceive like a limited range of those. And then the other ones like infrared and X-ray microwave, like they're invisible to us, but they exist, right? And so in the same way, there are these higher dimensions of reality that are beyond our perception when we're grounded in the physical body. But when you have an out-of-body experience, yeah, right. Okay. Uh, But during an out-of-body experience, your consciousness enters these higher dimensions and you, you you experience them. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what it is in a nutshell. And like, just so, so me and some of the people listening can get an understanding. How do you, how do you achieve the state of being? Like, I know you talk about well, in your book, obviously, but this is kind of just like a little, a little preview to the book. Yeah. Um, essentially, you want your body to fall asleep while your mind is awake. <laughs> so you want to achieve that body sleep, mind awake state. And typically, you'll, you'll do that with a type of meditation in which you allow the body to fall asleep while keeping the mind uh, you know, alert, awake, aware. And, um, and then it basically happens, um, almost, um, spontaneously or automatically. Like, uh, this actually happens every night when we go to sleep, our consciousness, um, kind of shifts from the physical body into these higher dimensions, but we're typically unconscious for the experience. So we're not aware of it. Right. But when you keep your mind awake, um, you are aware of this process that takes place and you basically just go for the ride. And uh, God. yeah, there's a lot of um, very 
incredible, interesting, amazing, frightening things out there that you can experience and encounter. And, you know, my, my book, I, I explain a lot of my more profound, uh, you know, interesting, scary experiences and, and, you know, anything that I feel has some kind of, um, you know, lesson or um, can, you know, help shed light into the nature of these experiences I included in the book. So, oh, yeah. you know, there are tons of experiences that over the years, uh, I kept journals of all my experiences. Holy so shit. like in writing the book, I basically chose what I felt were um, the most relevant experiences for a person who's just getting into this topic. You know, it's not for like an, an experienced astral projector. It's for someone new to the idea. For sure. Um, and it's kind of a progression and you see how this progression unfolds over time. Okay, sweet. Cause I, I mean, right when I, I heard about it with you, I was super interested because it's something, you know, you hear on the surface, the term, but you don't know much about it. And that was exactly my stance. Um, you know, for someone like me, I'm, I'm like a diva, a male diva where I get, you know, I got my nice fucking mattress. I got all these different pillows to sleep on and I can never seem to achieve like a good state of sleeping head or body. And now you're saying that the mind's got to be awake and the body's got to be asleep. So is your the preferred way you're doing that is always like a guided meditation or meditation you do on your own or how, what's exactly the, the steps for that? Cause I, I want to do it. I just feel like, you know, I'm not the kind of guy, I know it doesn't have anything to do with sleeping, but you know, you see some people that can sleep on an airplane, sleep on a couch anywhere. Like I need to be in a bed with my pillows and between my arms and legs, like a little bitch. So I'm curious if people like me can achieve that. Yeah, for sure. Anyone can do it. Um, as as far as like um, the specifics on the methods, the techniques, there are a lot of different ways you can go about it. And I explain a, most of the ones that I've done over the years in my book. Perfect. Um, so I started with uh, a method that you do uh, when you're going to sleep and it involves, um, you know, relaxing the body progressively and also um, keeping the mind, you know, quiet and still which will allow the body to fall asleep but you you want your mind to have um a focus so that it doesn't fall asleep with the body that's crazy but uh, there's a much more effective method that you can do in the early morning and it's more effective because in the early morning your body and your mind are already in the ideal state to uh project from the body wow, and that's man. because um, you know, loose. That, yeah, let's say after five or six hours of sleep, well, if you wake up, it's, it's pretty easy to fall back asleep, right? So your body's already yeah. very relaxed. So you don't need to like manually do this meditation to relax your body. It's already good to go. Wow, okay. And your mind also, um, has gotten some rest, you know, after five or six hours of sleep, um, you know, your mind is, is decently rested. Whereas if you do this at night, uh, usually, you know, we're tired both physically and mentally. So it's a lot easier to, to pass out. So, yeah, I would recommend uh, definitely doing it in the morning. And, um, and there are different uh, meditations you can do. Um, when I first started, I did a meditation which involved um, affirmations. And the idea is like to program your subconscious mind to uh, you know remain aware and project from the body and so you can repeat affirmations like my mind is awake my body's asleep wow. over and over again things like that and um and this method also utilized a third eye meditation you know the third eye chakra typically right between your eyebrows you focus on that area and you know it's it said that the third eye chakra acts as uh, like a link to the subconscious mind so as you state the affirmations you kind of envision them you feel them being absorbed into your third eye and this combination uh seems to be really effective i mean it worked almost immediately for me and it's uh it's, it's been my go-to method over the years but you know over time um it's gotten easier and so you know now you know, I can wake up and within seconds I'll be out of my body. So, you know, Damn. eventually you don't need to do all, all of that. 
uh, it gets easier over time. What's up, guys? You've heard me talk about out-of-body experiences, a little mushroom trip, a little bong pack here and there. Well, luckily for you, you can now experience these legally. Astral Projection and Lucid Dreaming by Vince Field is a book out where you can read and delve more into the world of -of out-of-body experiences and lucid dreaming. Vince has got 20 years experience of doing these crazy wild things that I have to take mushrooms or smoke 4,000 bong packs of to experience. Meanwhile, my boy uses his mind and his thoughts to take him to dimensions and planets never seen before in person by humans. Check it out on Amazon if you're interested. It's definitely something I'd enjoyed. Astral Projection and Lucid Dreaming by Vince Field. Check it out now. So when you started talking about like the third eye and the chakra and all that, I started wondering, cause again, I'm ignorant and all this kind of stuff. Did you have like a temple or like a Sherpa that you learned from or anything like that? Or did you kind of just do, is this all just you looking it up, reading a couple books or something, figuring that out? Like how does that all develop the not the deep knowledge you have? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well that particular method I found online. Like YouTube and, or just uh, Googling a simple, like, <clears throat> Man, the internet's crazy. This was oh. back, yeah. Well, this was back in 2000, and and back then, oh, it was like the early days Stone of the age, internet. Dog. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, dial up, waiting 10 minutes for a website to load. <laughs> so, there wasn't a lot of information uh, out there yet. Uh, it was very limited. So, you know, I did what I had access to, and it, you know, it it worked. So, how how crowded? Would you say this field is, is there a ton of guys that are writing books about this or are you kind of a niche market or what's that like? Um, I, I think it's getting more popular, um, you know, particularly compared to when I first started, sure. you know, there was a handful of authors back then and now you'll find a lot. Um, but, you know, I, yeah, I think, um, you know, in general, spirituality and, and different types of sp- spiritual practices like this are becoming increasingly more popular you know i think people are are more and more starting to to wake up and like realize like there's more to this life than just like this physical world and yeah you know and people want to explore that and you know when i was 14 that's what i wanted to do that's and, fucking uh, crazy dude yeah i made it my mission you know to to do that and that's what i did oh yeah so good for you bro following your passion um the move to brazil is that like to help more with this career and this passion or is that just like a, a move of spontaneous or you have a brazilian chick with a fat ass that got you over there what was the whole storyline behind that yeah my wife is brazilian and you know i met her in the states and we got married and we lived there for a while oh, and nice. we just decided to to move here and you know um that's all awesome. i had visited brazil multiple times while we were still living in the states and uh, I really liked it here, man. The lifestyle was really laid back and chill and people are super friendly. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, yeah, I don't need to work as much. My life is a lot, a lot more easygoing. Yeah. So. The, the cost of living there and stuff, is it just way more relaxed? You can get by with a lot less. Is that what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. Man, you know, I'm so we fascinated have... by that. Sure. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. Yeah. It's... Things are good here. If not, we would have moved back to the States. But... For sure. And you've been there close to 10 years, you said, right? Yeah. All right. So I always talk about with all my listeners, and I'll definitely ask you. Uh, the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, now that you're living in Brazil, is that something you've ever thought about getting into? Have you ever tried it? You ever hear about it? You surrounded by that lifestyle? I feel like that would kind of go well with uh, what you're into, you know? Yeah, man, for sure. Um, you know, when I was living in the States, I did Japanese Jiu-Jitsu. hey Okay. And, uh, you know, Every now and then I consider getting into Brazilian jiu-jitsu here. You know, for right now, I'm doing a little um, like Muay Thai and boxing. Oh, fuck yeah. But um, I mean, you would agree, dude. As far as exercise, like martial arts is the way I try to tell everyone. I'm like, it's not like me trying to tell you to go fight. It's like you learn a skill while you're having fun exercise. You know what I mean? As opposed to running on a treadmill, riding a bike every day. I say that just buying a fucking Peloton. So, (laughs) but you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Awesome. You know, my, my main like uh, exercise over the years has been weightlifting. You know, I, I've gone through phases where I've been like the Hulk. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, I, I kind of realized it's not really necessary. I mean, it kind of did more damage to me than good yeah. you know, because I've lost a lot of those muscles. And now, like, I got pains in my shoulder and my back. And it's like, eh, it's not really worth it. 
Yeah, see, like, it was funny. It was kind of the opposite with my brother and I. We grew up doing Olympic weightlifting where we would compete, go to, like, nationals, the Junior Olympics and all that. And we liked it for the first couple of years because my uncle got us into it. He owned a gym. But turn, during the end, when we started getting in high school, started, <laughs> like me, I started getting into smoking weed. You know, my dad got more into the lifting than us. So he would be like, Yo, we're going lifting today. So over the years, I just progressively got disinterested by weightlifting. So it's not something I'm really into anymore. Because, you know what I mean? It, it felt like it was force-fed to where I didn't enjoy it. Gotcha, gotcha. Know, if you have any experience like that growing up, like I always talk about how church was forced down my throat and then like not cursing. So I don't go to church and I curse like a sailor. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's typically the way it goes with most kids. I was but, wondering uh, if your parents like, kept you up all night and wouldn't let you look at anything. Now you're like, now I just want to see everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, not really. No, I've, I've, always, I've always been like very curious about things like that. Very open-minded. Sure. And uh, yeah, that's what kind of led me into this field. Oh, yeah. No, I think it's awesome what you're doing, man. And anytime people follow a passion of theirs, I, I want to do whatever I can to support it. Right when you told me I went on and bought the book on my Kindle and I'm trying to get my friends to spread the word and hear about it. And when this episode comes out, I think that'll definitely do a little bit. Um, awesome. Where do I want to go next? That. I mean, I bounce all over the place, but I can't really. And now it's on my mind. Are, uh, are bidets, are they prevalent in Brazil? What's what's it like there? Are you familiar with the bidet lifestyle? No. Oh, no. man. Changed my life. Yeah, it's a little device you install on the toilet, you know, after you take a little uh, steamy little <laughs> steamy right, little mess. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I've been trying to get sponsored by them. I've emailed them a couple times. And, you know, I don't do, like, That's TikTok fine. or Facebook. And they're like, you got to get more followers. So, hello, Tushy. I'm coming for you, and I ain't giving up. <laughs> so, uh, another question, Vince, if you don't mind. Uh, you know, in my, in my reckless years, in my juvenile years, and even still to this day, I still like to dabble with the psychedelics. I'm just curious if there's any kind of parallel between your natural state of mind and the psych. I don't know if you've ever dabbled in them. If you don't want to talk about it, you don't have to. But just talking to people, doing your research, are there any, because just by listening to you, I mean, I'm definitely hearing some stuff that sounds similar and cool to me, and, you know, I don't have to pay for it. So elaborate on that a little. Yeah, for sure. Uh, there are definitely some similarities. Um, I think with certain drugs like DMT, ayahuasca, you know, mushrooms, things like that. Um, I think these do allow you to access other dimensions of reality, like other, like legit dimensions of reality. So it's not just like hallucinations in your mind. I think there is something uh, that something tangible and valid that you do experience during these, these, these trips. For sure. Um, Dang. I, the the issue uh the main issue that i see is that you don't really have control over the experience so like you leave your body and you know you can come back to your body anytime you want but you know you take a big hit of you know dmt and you're out there and you're not coming back until it's over you know what i'm saying have you ever tried? I've never tried. I've never even been able to get it on like that shit kind of, I've done mushrooms and acid, but the DMT, like if I can get a hold of it, I might try and be curious, but I'm just so curious what that's like and what that's about. Yeah, no, I've never done it, but I I've heard, I've listened to and read different experiences yep. and yeah, it sounds ridiculous. I, now, I, you, I'd honestly be a little afraid to do it just because. <laughs> so you, you've heard so like DMT, it supposedly doesn't last, it's what, between five and 15 minutes, right? Yeah, pretty short. What are your out of body experiences? I mean, are you fully in control? Do you determine the length of them or is it all different? How does that work? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, a big factor in how long your experience lasts is your state of consciousness and like the strength of your awareness and lucidity. And, and there, there are ways to increase and enhance that. So you can prolong your experience with using different methods, different techniques while you're out there and it'll help you stay out for longer. You, does uh, the diet play a role in this at all? You know, like you talk about like, you know, you smoke some weed and then you eat a, a mango and the acid gets you. Like, is there anything that you can eat before or after this or during to help heighten that? Or are you kind of just in the zone, not moving when it's going on? Do you have your eyes open? Uh, like, yeah. I, there's... Well, not, not now. <laughs> I was like, open your eyes, boy. <laughs> I'm curious, like, while you're seeing all this, is it like eyes open, fully aware, your eyes closed, and you're like, well, well, like I said, you need your body to to be asleep, asleep right? With your head, and mind so, be... so you know, as far as how your body looks, you're sleeping, you're laying in bed, your eyes are closed. 
Um, but you know, when you're out there, you see, you hear, you touch. Um, but but it's more of like a, a mental level of experience. Um, basically, what happens is when you shift from your body, your consciousness shifts from the body. Uh, you begin uh, to see. So like your perception of the environment around you, it comes into view. And that happens as you enter a higher dimension. And so, um, yeah, like, like I said, there's a whole spectrum of different dimensions. Sure. And so like, typically when you first start doing this, you only enter the lower dimensions, like the dimensions that are just slightly higher than the physical dimension. Um, and so these environments usually look a lot like the physical world, but as you get farther beyond, and you, as you enter at higher dimensions, um, things get a lot more different, you know, a lot more unique and unusual and like abstract. And when you get into the really higher dimensions, uh, it's like nothing like the physical world at all. And it's really hard to find words to like accurately describe it because oh, it's just so even... far beyond like what our physical like concepts and language are able to to describe. Are you, you've been to the top of the mountain, I'm assuming you've had all these, these crazy higher level ones. I mean, you've been doing it for as long as you have. I'm sure you've kind of hit the pinnacle. Is there another level that you like, can you keep getting crazier and crazier? Or is it kind of, I know it's probably a very tough question to answer, but I'm, is there like a cat? I'm trying to even think of how to answer this or ask this. Like, yeah, no, I totally understand. I understand what you're, what you're asking. Um, uh, and I haven't, um, like are the experiences. I, I don't think there's like, I don't think there's a limit. I think, I think the highest state is like pure union with, ghost. with God. Oh, right. Oh, I can't do it. Some of the stuff you're saying, like it has my legs tingling and shit. I'm like, what is this guy doing and talking about? <laughs> so like, a, a, as you get higher in the dimensions, you start to experience a stronger and stronger unity with, with like all of creation. See, that's where I like the mushroom parallels for me. Cause when I've eaten like a good amount of shrooms, you feel like you're becoming one with your earth. And I know it sounds crazy, but I'm sure you can relate based off your experiences. Yeah, for sure. For Holy sure. Shit. And you know, as you get higher, you also experience like more profound states of like of love and bliss. And um, yeah, it, it gets to such a point where you can't really stand you can't bear it like it feels like your identity is like shattering and um it's just sometimes it's too much to to hold on to like you can't remain in that state for very long um it, it's yeah now when it's you're experiencing that state and it's getting a little uncomfortable can you have like a guy there like someone like your friend just like smack your leg and then your body wakes up and you're out of it or like how, how do you can you can you choose when you want to snap out of it? Do you open your eyes and you're out of it? Like, how does that, I mean, I know you said your eyes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all intention. It's all intention. So, right, you okay. know, the moment that you're ready to, to end the experience, it's, over. Um, yeah, you just have that thought and wow. you're back in your body. It's, so it's every, just like dreaming. Is, I mean, you think you're going to start waking up, you wake up, it's over, but you're conscious while this is happening. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, it, it, it's all mental, right? So, you know, when you move, like you want to go to this place, well, you think your way there kind of, um, Whoa. and, uh, you know, a lot of the experiences I've had over the years, uh, for example, um, meeting my deceased relatives, um, meeting, you know, different types of entities, um, going to this place or that place, it's all initiated by your intention yeah. and uh yeah it's not like you got to move your your legs and walk from place to place right it's like your consciousness just goes there so someone like you who's a i would consider a veteran and an expert at this point can you kind of almost plan and project what you're i mean i know you call it astro, but can you kind of like plan what you want to get out of the experience going into it all with your thoughts yeah Yes. Um, and that's something I started to do over the years. Um, I realized like, you know, in the beginning I was just out there exploring and I didn't really have a, a game plan, you know, right. but 
I started to realize like I can really get something valuable from these experiences. So, you know, like I made a list of goals, like things I want to do, people, you know, entities and places I want to go and, and, you know, so you don't yeah. ever have to travel again. You can go see the grand Canyon for free. You can go anywhere you want and not have to pay. You're fucking yeah, cheating sure. in life, Vince. This is bullshit. I don't want to support <laughs> you anymore. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, man, um, the thought doesn't come to me anymore to go see the pyramids or go to the grand canyon really? because man the higher dimensions are like infinitely more incredible and interesting than anything you can have you ever seen the liberty bell in this world? <laughs> that's on my list man i'm just one, one i was trying to I'll think of somewhere there. where i'm from that i was like <laughs> have you seen the ac boardwalk <laughs> yeah i can so I, I mean i've definitely i've only gotten like 10 pages into your book and i'm trying to figure out how to scratch just the surface area of getting in this, but I, I can't lie. It does sound a little bit overwhelming and intimidating. You know what I mean? Based off of what you're saying, the how amazing this is. I'm like, can I really do this without dedicating my life? You know what I mean? Right. Right. You know, you don't need to dedicate your life, you know, dedicate 10 minutes in the morning, every morning, you know, I mean, you do want to be consistent, right? Right. So, so you're like, doing this every day. Yeah. I mean, I mean you have to, I, your freaking powers. I, I talk to people, you know, they, they message me on discord or, you know, Facebook, whatever. And they're like, you know, I need help with this. I've been doing it for so long and I haven't been successful. And then I talk to them a little more, get some more details. And it, it turns out like they're, they're missing something. Like there's a formula. Like when I went back and looked at my own practice and to see like why I was so successful, like I realized there were a few uh, like key elements that were present. So it was like dedication, motivation, like consistency, um, you know, the right technique. Right. And, um, you know, all that just came together. And uh, if you're missing even one of those things, it's going to make things, you know, pretty difficult. Did you have a decent trial and error period as far as getting into it and then struggling with it a little bit? Or did you pretty much achieve success pretty quickly? Yeah, man. I mean, I had my first projection within a week. And that was using um, a method which is a little more, um, you know, difficult, that method at night. But soon after that, I discovered that early morning method, and that just worked instantly. And uh, I never really had much of an issue in terms of getting out of my body. But I did have issues, like, navigating through these experiences, you know. There there are some, uh, yeah, and even just, like, Oh, sometimes you, it's almost like learning how to walk, right? Because it's, it's a different way to function. So, you know, out there in the astral dimension, like you can fly right through objects, fly through your wall, through your roof. Um, but we do have like these these beliefs that we hold on to from this world. So like, you know, we know we can't just walk through this wall right here. Um, and sometimes they carry over into these experiences. And so like, you know, every once in a while, uh, you'll find yourself like not being able to to pass through a wall. It's almost like there's this like this force pulling you back. Dude, it's like you're and living so think- a double life. You're like trapped in that room right now. And you're like, I just want to fucking bust through the wall like a cool life, man. I can't imagine like if you've been able to do these things in our dimension, you come back to this world and you can. I'm like, that's kind of got to suck. Does that ever get frustrating for you to see what you're able to achieve in another dimension? Then you come down to your your boring earth life and you're like, damn, I got to go through a door. <laughs> No, not really. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and you were just talking about shooting through ceilings and walls. I'm like, man, if he's experienced that, like it's like I said, it's like a double life because you know you can do it in one dimension. You come down here and you got to be taking all these longer routes to get where you want. Right. Well, I mean, these experiences, they kind of change your your perspective of, you know, who you are and like what your life is about and like what this reality is, you know, so you know, they, they never lead to frustration. It's always just like, kind of like it enhances your perception of this world. You know what I'm saying? So it, uh, I guess it has the opposite effect of what you were joking about. Like that's yeah. Have you ever gone to a Chick-fil-A in another dimension? (laughs) Serious question. Yeah, man. But over there they have like three headed (laughs) chickens and, uh, genetically modified out the wazoo. (laughs) have you ever like 
gone to the dimensions and eaten anything or, or taking a shit? Or are you literally just like traveling through? Like, I got to know if you've ever used a bidet. No, <laughs> like, are you just traveling <laughs> through the sky, like looking at stuff, Superman vibes, or you said walking, but I'm like, I feel like you could choose to jump and get a jetpack on and fly if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Walking. It just doesn't make sense when you're out of your body. Right. Because like I said, like everything is done through your mind. So like, let's say, you know, you float out of your body and you're above your bed and you want to go out the window. Well, you just think like, I'm going to go out of my window. And, I need to go. do this, bro. I like listen to you. It makes me crazy with jealousy. Cause I'm like, how does this guy. And I, 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 I had a moment ago when you were explaining how like good and how many times you've done this. I'm like, this guy to me could seem like a fucking junkie where his wife's like trying to get him to do something. He's like laying in that state, just like going through experiencing all the things that we wish we could. Is that ever something that gets in the way, you know, where you're, you're in the middle of seeing cool stuff and she doesn't want to disturb you. Is that ever come up? No, I mean, mo- most oh, of my yeah. experiences happen while I'm still in bed, you know, either before falling asleep or like waking up early, but I'm never like really taking time out of my day to do this. Okay. Cause so you know, like I said, like the I- routine at this point. Yeah. Yeah. You know, wake up, leave the body you know you you can train yourself to um to catch the very moment that you awaken and what and what you want to do is you want to keep completely still because usually like the moment we wake up like we move stretch or something right we you gotta um kind of fight that off you gotta become aware the very moment you wake up and then you just allow yourself to slip right back into a deep state but you know holding on to your your consciousness so you remain aware and you can just shift right out of the body so so i imagine you're a pretty heavy sleeper as far as like if someone makes a noise like a small noise you're not waking up from that or you've always because like to me i'm a super light if i hear like a tap on the wall i'm awake and i'm like already moving i'm like so i feel like that part would be a struggle for me or debunk that for me um Man, I think I'm a, a normal sleeper, you know, not not too heavy, not too light. Um, you know, like I, I've had experiences where um, I can hear what's happening in the physical world, like around me, like in the room, um, but I'm still out of my body at the same time. It's kind of like a, a dual awareness. Uh, and, and that happens because what actually happens is uh, your consciousness doesn't just leave the body like an empty shell, but it kind of splits off. It like um, almost like replicates itself and it projects into multiple dimensions simultaneously. And, and typically uh, we're only aware of just one of these level of experiences, but, you know, over the years with, you know, different experiments in these States um, I've learned that um, we do actually operate in multiple levels, multiple dimensions of, of reality at the same time. And you can actually learn to split your own conscious awareness to experience multiple levels of reality at the same time, including what's happening like in the physical world. I wish I could like ask a question off that, but that, that kind of just blew my fucking mind. Honestly, (laughs) it gets deep, man. It gets really deep once you, start to really well that's like um, i was gonna say when I, what i like doing every night before bed is i love reading that helps me fall asleep and i'm like i was sitting there the last couple of nights trying to read yours and i'm like this is so fucking hard to comprehend when i'm trying to fall asleep you know what i mean so like, i feel like i gotta integrate this into more of like a day reading thing because dude it trust me i'm not just saying it because you're on here like i wouldn't have had back and forth conversation if i wasn't interested this is something that's so fascinating to me but i just feel like that learning curve is a little bit you know what i mean a little steep right yeah, man. I mean, you definitely want to to be like uh, awake and have like a, a good, uh, you know, focus when you're reading this. But, you know, I did write it for like beginners. The layman's, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's why so, I was curious about it. And I'm very interested and I'm by no means by giving up hope. But I'm just saying like I'll usually like watch a little TV and start dozing out and then I'll put on my, my Kindle or pick up a physical book and start reading that to help me really pass out. And what I've been doing, I'm like, the problem is I don't feel like, you know, if you're reading a mob or some kind of book like that, which I'm all about, you read it, you forget, you wake up, read the last couple of pages. But with yours, I feel like there's such a concerted effort for me to try to understand it in the first glimpse. So I think maybe I'm trying to overwork myself a little bit in that regard. You know what I mean? Like, have you had other first time people reach out 
with success stories already? Yeah, for sure. Definitely. It's freaking awesome. And you know, um, it, it's kind of a progression. Like I introduce the concepts in a progression. So it's not like everything all at once, but it kind of builds upon um, as, you know, I, I basically detail my experiences like in chronological order. And so in the beginning, I didn't have like a fully comprehensive understanding of any of this. Sure. So I, I kind of um, explain all of that as I make these, you know, discoveries through my experiences throughout so cool. the book. Have your journal to kind of look back on. And then as you progress further, you start looking back on that and seeing how much you've learned. I bet that was really cool to have that. I don't want to call it a guide, but that journal almost was essentially like a rough draft. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it, I didn't have to write the majority of the book. It was already written. I had to, you know, just organize that. That's so sick. Now, do you have that book written in English and Portuguese or what was that? Probably, Cause you're living in Brazil, obviously. Are you in a pretty yeah. heavily populated area with English speaking people or did you have a, like, how does that work? Uh, no, it's only available in English. That's got to be a major pain, right? To get it done, published in another language or. Man, I did everything through Amazon and uh, yeah, it's actually a very easy process to, to self publish on Amazon. Very nice. So yeah, that was, that was pretty simple. And um, in, in terms of like Portuguese, you know, I might. Um, Do you speak at all? One day. Yeah, man. I mean, I've been here for nine years. I was going to say, I feel like you definitely yeah. have just, you're probably, yeah. did you just learn by talking with your wife, going on the street and just kind of going out, splitting up, excuse me, splitting up <laughs> these Jersey hands, splitting up on your own and learning like that. You know what I mean? Like you would isolate from her and just go have a conversation by yourself to, to force it. Yeah. I, I learned uh, just through experience living here and um, you know, it took a while, but huh. you know, I got there and awesome, you know, bro. I, I work with, um, with translations you know i do academic translations so oh wow i, I translate portuguese to english right. I, I work for like professors who publish academic articles and journals and um you know uh, my ability to translate from portuguese to english is much better than my ability to translate from english to portuguese so it would be a challenge to to write this or translate yeah. it to portuguese but it's something that i'll consider I was going to say mean, for future projects, because it doesn't sound like you're going to do one book and be done. It sounds like you're going to keep them going. Is that something you've thought about or doing like an audio book later on, having like your wife say it, speak in Portuguese or something like that? I think that'd be kind of dope, you know, have an audio book available. There is an audio book, man. Yeah, you can get it. Oh, Amazon. I didn't even. Damn. See, I bought the physical book because I feel like I comprehend things when I'm physically reading them as opposed to listening. So that's why right. I wanted to buy the physical copy of that. But and do you do the voiceover yeah, sure. yourself? No, I, I didn't do that. I got you have to a pay someone, or how does it? Uh, well, there are different um, ways to go about that. You can pay them, and you receive more royalties, or you yeah. can split the royalties. And I went uh, with that approach. Cool. Hey, it's an experimental process, right? It's your first time doing it. You kind of see what you like, what you don't like about it. Yeah. Use that for your next time. For sure. Hell yeah. So I, I hate getting cut off on the end of these podcasts as I always kind of end it like this. We got about a minute and a half left. So I wanted to give you this time to kind of promote your book, tell the people a little bit about it, where they can find it. Go buddy. All right, for sure. Yeah, man. Um, just uh, check out amazon.com. Uh, my name is Vincent Field and the book is called Astral Projection and Lucid Dreaming, Spiritual Revelations and Out-of-Body Experiences in Higher Dimensions. Wow, you remember all that in one slap like that. It's pretty impressive. And for you guys who didn't hear it clearly, I'm sure you did, but it's Vincent Field, like a football field, F-I-E-L-D. And type that in, astral project, projection and lucid dreaming. It should definitely come up. Uh, Vince, I just want to give you a huge thank you for some of the editing that you've helped me with so far. Uh, your book has given me entertainment for jumping on on such short notice, brother. Uh, it was an honor to have you. I hope you enjoyed our time together. And any last words? Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, thanks for having me on, dude. And uh, man, there's a lot more to talk about if you want to do part two, part oh, three. Oh, I definitely you know. do, bro. I want to try to get a little better at this. And when I do, reach out to you and have a kind of a recap session where I come on, you kind of ask me some questions. I think that'd be kind of dope. Nice. Sounds good. Awesome, Vince. Thanks so much again. Thank you guys for listening. All right, bro. Peace.